What is up guys, welcome back. Today we're taking a look at this amazing awards winning animation, which is kind of a scaling animation based on the position of the cursor. We're gonna take a look at two key concepts in this animation. And as always, you can take a look at the live demo and the source code in the description below. All right, so the first thing I did here was to create the Next.js application. I used the latest flag to use the latest version of Next.js. And then I deleted everything inside of the page.js the page module CSS and the global CSS to start with a nice blank application. Now I'm also going to use SAS for this tutorial. So we can go ahead and do npm install SAS. And then I'll just convert the page module inside of an SCSS file. And then I've added some basic HTML and CSS to start with a nice skeleton. And we should have something like this. And with that, we're ready to start working on the double component. A double component will be a pair of two images. And so those two images here will be a double. And so we're gonna have one, two, three, and four double components. And then I have the images that I'm going to use for this tutorial. And so I can create an images folder inside of the public folder and grab the images here. And then I also have the data that we're going to use. Every single project that we see here is a project inside of the projects array. And so we're going to use that data and we're going to pass it to the double components. Then I've created a components folder where I've put the double components. Inside of it, I've just created a simple React component with a SCSS style sheet. And now we have our four double components here. And like I said, every single double components is a pair of two projects. And so I'm going to do that here. And with that, we're ready to start working on the double component. And then here I've added the HTML for the double component. I have an image container and inside of that I have a stretchy container. And then inside of that I have a next image. And then I just copy paste the same thing so we can have a pair of two images. And I'm going to go into styling here and there's quite a few things that are specific for this animation. The image container, we're going to have the first one take 66.66% and then we're going to have the second one take 33.33 and that way we can have something like this with a pair with one image that's bigger than the other. And here we're going to use the padding in percentage on the stretchy container. That's why I called it that way. And we're going to use a padding bottom of 66.66%. Now, why that specific value? Basically, I didn't understand this concept. Like, I didn't understand the logic of why putting padding bottom will affect the aspect ratio of the image. And this answer on Stack Overflow really helped me understand. If we use a padding bottom of 66.66%, we're going to have an aspect ratio of 3 by 2. That's like the basic logic. And so with that, we can basically keep the aspect ratio of the image and we're going to be able to modify the width of the image and the height will change according to that. And then I'm just going to do position relative here and then I can put the double here in display flex. Now they are the same images here. I believe there's an, there's an error with my HTML. I need to target the second project here. And now the images are like crammed together and I can fix this problem by specifying that the image should have an object fit of cover and now they look fine. And then here I've completed the CSS by adding some values for the body container. And then I've added some margin top as well just to make everything look good. And then we should have something like this, a pretty good HTML and CSS. And with that, we're ready to start animating everything. Now, the first thing we can do to make this animation is to extract the position of the mouse. And we can do that by extracting the client X from the event. And now we have the position of the mouse. And if we want it to be relative to the window, we can create here a const and I'm going to call it X percent. And that is going to be equal to the client X divided by the inner width of the window. And with that, we have the relative position of the mouse. And then I'm just going to multiply that by 100. And so now X percent is a value that ranges from zero to a hundred, depending on the position of the cursor on the X axis. Now to understand those values here, the first image here has 66.66% of width initially. That's what we set using CSS. And the second image has 33.33% of width. That's what we did with CSS as well. And so that's why it starts with those values. And then for the first image, we want to subtract a certain value based on the position of the mouse. And for the second image, we want to add a certain value based on the position of the mouse. And with that, we have like this nice animation where the first image ranges from 66 to 33. And the second image ranges from 33 to 66, depending on the position of the mouse. Now this animation works fine, but one thing I don't like is it's not that smooth. I personally would prefer if there was some kind of easing to it. 
And there's not really a way to create an easing simply inside of a mouse event. And so what we're going to do is create an animate function and we're going to use the request animation frame to create an easing. And so let's convert this animation using request animation frame. So the first thing we can do is create an animate function. This will be in the animate function and the X percent, we can put it outside and initialize it at zero. And then we're going to increment it every time we move the mouse. And then we can also have here a request animation frame ID, which would be null at first. And then if that request animation frame ID does not exist, then we will trigger a new request animation that will call our animate function that we just created. And then inside of this animate function, we want to make it recursive so we can do request animation frame of itself like this. And if we save this, I believe it should be the same. And so now we have the same animation that we had, but it's now using a request animation frame instead. And I see that they are like moving weirdly. So I'm going to change the CSS for that. I think I just need to set a certain height. I'm going to do 45 viewport width. And with that, this looks pretty good. Now we have the same animation that we had in the beginning, but using the request animation frame. And to create that easing, we're going to have a current X percent that will be initialized at 0 2. And then we're going to have a certain speed, which will be the easing. We can do 0 0.15. And then inside of the animate function, I'm going to do the easing here. And what I need to create here is a delta, which would be the delta X percent, which is the difference between, let's see, the X percent and the current X percent. And then I will tell the current X percent to be the current X percent, but I will also add a certain value, which will be that delta multiplied by the speed. And then instead of the using directly the X percent here, I'm going to use the current X percent, which is like a slowed down version of the X percent, right? And now we have a nice easing animation. And that's because we are simply slowing down the animation and we are letting the request animation frame slowly increment the current X percent to be close to the actual X percent value. But by doing that, we create another problem. If you think about it, we have a request animation frame that's running for every single double component. And right now we have like four double components, which means we have four request animation frame running in the background. And that can hit the performance of the browser, right? If you don't have a really good computer, it's going to slow everything down. And so we need to find a way to basically cancel the request animation frame when it's not doing anything. For example, right now I'm not moving my mouse. So why should the request animation frame be running if there's nothing that's being animated? It's just wasted resources, right? What we can do is check and we're going to do math round and check the current X percent to see if it is equal to the X percent value. And this basically means that the easing is done. And so what we can do is cancel the request animation frame and we can give it the ID. And then we're going to just do the ID is equal to null else, meaning the easing is not done yet. We want to call that function. And with that, it's going to be the same thing. But now we know that in the background, the request animation frame will stop when the easing is done. Now the animation is basically finished. We could leave it at that. But there's one last touch that we can also add is to basically reverse the layout. And so if we take a look at the demo here, we can see that the first image is big and the, the second double, it's like on the other side, right? And that's just to have like a nice layout instead of having what we're, we have right now, which is like everything is the same. Well, I'm just going to refresh here and everything is the same. It's kind of boring, right? We would like the projects to be reversed just to have a nice layout. And here, what we can do is in the double here, I'm going to target the double and I'm going to do the n child, which are even, I'm going to modify the position of the image container and I'm just going to reverse them. So it's going to be 33, 33 here, and then 66, 66. And with that, we basically switched our layout, but we also <laughs> broke the animation if we do that. If I hover on like this image here, there's like, there's like a bug, right? It's, there's like a twitch. And if we see the first pair, there's no problem. It looks fine. But, but the one that I reversed, it's kind of looking weird the first time I hover. So what we can do to fix that is to basically add a props that we're going to call it reversed, just to specify that this one is reversed. And then we can go here where we import the component and we're going to specify that it is reversed. And so these two are reversed. And then we can use that reverse value and we're going to change the X percent initially it's going to be 100 if it is reversed, else zero. And same thing for the current X percent, which is used for the easing. Is it reversed? If it is 100, else it's going to be zero. And with that, we kind of fix the problem of having the animation like the jittery bug. If I hover here, 
you're gonna see that it's working like the first double here that is not reversed and with that we have the final animation so really nice animation personally i really liked it and we saw two key concepts which is basically to use the padding bottom as a percentage to keep the aspect ratio. And we also took a look at how we can create an easing inside of a request animation frame. So if you like the video, leave a like, it helps me a lot and I'll see you in the next one.